big ask, and I think that it's really difficult for people to make that choice. So let me ask specifically, are you saying about the one point of entry being at, for instance, St. Francis, it, it needs to be someplace other than the shelter, or are you talking about just referring people to the shelters? People have to stay in the shelter in order to get the service, from what I'm hearing. Okay, let's try to get that figured out. Sorry, you get an answer in there. Yeah, actually, uh, our outreach workers can also do that type of intake and uh, get people connected to one home. So uh, we do have people, we have people on the street to get them into one home. So Chris, if, do you want to help with that? Yeah, the agencies that will help our street outreach team are the Guys, you can follow this day center that they have to be at. Out of Cut the plastic and Denver Homeless Out Loud. It's before your 25th birthday. It doesn't necessarily mean mine, right? Finally, uh, Colorado Coalition for the Homeless is actually the ones who lead the Denver Street Outreach Collaborative Team and also support a team of, of outreach workers. I'd also mention uh, Denver Public Library's social work team. Uh, we can get them acquainted to, to doing those intakes as well. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. So as to, I know it's by St. Francis. Um, the first one we went to was at 16th and then we did my fiance is in Pakistan. The first hour he we were there, they were yelling at him because he was in my tent and he was in the front there. And then so, his first time in school in about two months. And um, after that, um, because we're And just last week, one of the staff members attacked my husband and um, started a fight with him. And we got kicked out for it. So they put us back on the streets, a safe spot. What are we supposed to do? This is supposed to be our transition. He had an interview for a job that he lost because he has a bill for housing them. So what do we do? I, that, that's a great question. I don't know who to. I didn't bring my tripod to the car. I can go give it to Jess and go watch my car. I would say, talk to Chris when you get a chance today. I want to look to see if there's any folks who are experiencing homelessness. Let me see if you have comments, questions, anything, and then I'll come back there. Do you have a housekeeping? Yeah. I'm trying to get the hand up. So, how about I start right here? And, okay. I got a phone. This is the phone. What about these kids? You know, we got kids like on drugs. There's nobody else. I'm here 19 and I come out to this. Come on, man. Y'all look down on us. You can't walk out. I look like a long walk. Everybody want to put themselves first. What do I put us at? What about the kids? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
kids. It's like, we have this bunch of kids. So your, your question is, what are we doing to address the kid issue? Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens now. All we got to do is show their face, don't ask me. I might get a longer answer for you, but when it comes to dealing with kids, who does this gentleman need to talk to? That's what he asked. He said, who can I talk to about dealing with kids? So, lady there, and we'll look for an answer in a minute. While I'm over here, I'm going to keep collecting comments or questions. Well, my name is Ethan Curious. He was I've been out of her for like 18 months. That was least from the penitentiary. And it's more people that's in housing, that live in houses, I mean, do more help than the city. They give out their heart. They be there constantly. And I'm going to tell you right now, I got frostbite. They had to cut my toes off. I got the property now. My whole arm is destroyed. This is get some housing. You know what I'm saying? And there's people out here need help. You know, they, they be trying, but they ain't taking time to listen to them. You know what I'm saying? And, and they steady moves in, move here, move there. If you keep moving, how you gonna find them? You know what I'm saying? And it's not right for him to say he was out here running around homeless. I didn't see him. So it's wrong for both sides, but we need to come together some way, somehow. If we communicate, it'd be better for everybody. God is good, though. Because I love all the people that helped me, and they helped the other people that's out there. I wouldn't have made it this far. So, when it's like that, we got to keep praying. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate that, and, and I think there's you know a bunch of people here trying to do that, but we can certainly do better. I certainly get that. Yeah. Did you have your hand up, ma'am? I wanted to give an opportunity to anybody in the house first um, to speak, but I just wanted to say some words to advocate for the unhoused, so if anybody else. Okay, let me check. I'm, I'm looking for specifically folks that are unhoused. Okay, first of all, to keep on saying unhoused, we got to remember we are citizens of the United States first. They, we have rights here. And to tell you the truth, they don't have any problem finding space. I say that we, they don't have a problem finding space for cars. Cars have precedence again over the people of the United Makes States. Sense. These people have a plan, plan already. Their plan is to make it as painful on us as possible until we leave the city. That's their plan. Right now, there's a park right across the street. Everybody's putting up their hands going, where do we find space? And you know, I am appalled that there is a library in the United States of America with a fence around it. Right. Thank you. Let me look back here. You guys are sort of up in the bleachers. Anybody that is... Yeah, I don't pick them up. Oh, okay. Also, what I to speak about uh, uh, the people who work in the house, like me. Um, sometimes we take too long, like me, a specific single man, to, to get a house in, like, years, like, four or five years. But we, you know, and so we can get about that. We take too long to get a house in. House in. So, so you're, you're saying where do single men go for housing? Where do they get that? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, 818 East 20th Avenue is a releasing property that's called PK Management. They work with emergency, transitional, and uh, displaced housing. HUD, all of them, even Denver Housing Authority. I was an employee, supervisor for three years at this property, and they're actually accepting applications now. 16 portfolios, uh, 361 units, and they've uh, all been remodeled most recently um, by the state or the mm -hmm. state uh, mm -hmm. regulations, like HUD housing regulations. Uh, they're really immaculate. Um, for seniors, you got your 1559 or 1599 William Tell, the high rise, Cap Hill, Denver Northeast, Nuevo Americana. Um, we have a lot of properties located all over the city. And if you just, uh, they're located at 818 East 20th Avenue, and that's going to be the trees department, and you have the Cap Hill properties. So you have your, uh, you have your switch, whether you want to stay in Capitol Hill, or you want to be located all over the city. And they also work with other uh, housing authorities and transitional housing to try to deal with the old. 
So I'm going to tell folks, you, you gave us a lot of information. I'm going to tell folks that they need to look for the guy in the bright green shirt. No, I'm sure. Okay? Okay? Yeah. Um, Mara, any questions that we're missing that we need to get answered? Um, any questions that those who are experiencing homelessness, the unhoused, any questions? The, the question about where to single male. Okay, I'm going to come back. I don't know, if, Marta, if you're the, if you're the, yeah. not Marta, um, oh, Shane's they're, they're right there. Britta, sorry, I've got too many names in my head right now, I'm sorry. Don't so, know if you're the, the one to answer the, where do we, what, where do the single men go, and, and then I'll be back to you. Man. I would recommend everyone get assessed for that one home single point of entry to get connected with the resources. Um, overall, one of the things I'll say is that the voucher program federally there's about one voucher for every four people who qualify. And so it's it's hard, right? There's lottery systems and so forth for even public housing. And so um, I know that you are all advocating. I would include our federal government in that. There's an infrastructure bill right now that would add a lot more vouchers and a lot more housing. Uh, there's also uh, the Biden administration working towards universal vouchers, where everyone who's eligible would get a voucher for housing. Uh, that kind of thing would be game changing and revert from this kind of game show odds that we have right now. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Let me get back to, to you. I promise I'd get back to you. What, what, what about Sharon? Sharon. Yeah, yeah. This person is weird. <laughs> okay, two questions here. How do we get support for mental health? I think you raised that. And then what do we do for safety issues? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the city to, to help us with that answer, but I'm, I'm going to get over to this lady first, and then we'll come back there. Safety issues. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I want to know, I just want to name that right now there is a, there is a dramatic displacement going on right now. We're, help, have, we're here having this meeting about the Lyle sediment and the dramatic displacements in the city, and there's one happening right now displacing hundreds of people, the largest one in seven months. So let's just name that, that this is the space that the city's brought us to, the time is that. And let's also name that if we're suggesting shelters. In December 2020, the 48th Street shelter tested, had a, posit a COVID positivity rate of 32%. The state average on that day was 6.29%. So when we're up here and people are suggesting shelters and shelters, there's a variant and people are not going to want to go to shelters because they're afraid for their lives. And you're asking them to risk their lives to get housing and that's ridiculous. Not only that, but we're hearing people, you know, on the streets who are being assaulted by housed people. Yeah. Orange lining is the new red lining in Denver. And I wanna know yes. what we're gonna do about the use of public space. Who is allowed to police public space in the city? Because I'm, you know, churches are now are carting people to get in. Jesus was homeless. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but Jesus was homeless and we're carting people to get into churches? What is wrong with this city? I mean, we have a major issue. So your question, what are we, what are we doing to manage public spaces? Was that fair? Huh? Who, you know, what is the point of a zoning code? Really, you know, what's the point of a zoning code that then, that house people can violate, right? And can put up fences that are against the code and then can then be used and get the code then is used against unhoused. What, I mean, what is the point of the code? I wanna know that. Okay, rather than maybe what is the point of the code, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about public, let's talk about public, let's talk about public space. I still got a couple of unhoused people, so let me get, let me get to them, okay? <laughs> no, I've never. No, I've never screwed me. I had the bump tears, I signed up for this another place. The bar hits. Two more players in Comanche Street. Uh, $50 Vegas, my pay office also. They won't give my money for three months. What's going on? That probably brings us back to the whole mental health question that we've got. Yeah. Hello. My name is Roddy Wobo. I work with the Denver Boys. We're fierce advocates for homeless. Okay. I have resources in this paper where homeless people can try to get on their feet, back on their feet. I mean, you know, I went to a program in Fort Lyons where, you know, I was able to uh, obtain a house. And it, it was tough. I was out here for 28 plus years, okay? I fought through that. But my question is, yeah, I'm a veteran. 
I could, I could probably be a, and then turn down a building that can house 2,000 homeless folks. Why are you tearing that building down and, and, and not housing these people? <laughs> Somebody got to answer this question. It, 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 made no, it is perfect working facility, okay? It, it's a perfectly working facility. You're tearing it down, you put up condos. <laughs> My thing is, I cry for these people. I was homeless, I was like I said, out there for 20 years plus. Um, I finally got housed through Fort Lyons. You know, you have to fight. Don't give up. You have to fight. Do this. Find a way. I have a lifetime housing doctor now. The Durkin doctor, has anybody mentioned that? No. Ask somebody about the Durkin doctor. I can never be evicted. No more. I will never. See, see, uh, uh, Carl, uh, uh, homeless. Help me to get this back, to obtain this back, sir. Okay? I have keys now. I was out there. But you have to fight. You, they're going to tell you no. I thought my first name was no for many years. Rodney, I'm like, no, my name is not Rodney. My name is no. Because you always tell me, no, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. You have to keep on fighting. There are resources out there for you. They're not going to tell you. But they're out there, and you must keep buying and keep searching. So the same way that I pointed people to the guy in the green shirt, I'm going to say, if, if some of you want to talk to Rodney, come talk to Rodney, right? I know, we're not going to call you no. We're just going to call you Rodney. Okay? You've had your hand up several times, ma'am, so sorry about that. I just wanted to ask you, safety about the police department, what we can do and the businesses, People that are going by and you know, assaulting us and yelling at us. I mean, there should be some kind of law or something we can do. Yeah. I, 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 it's yes. kind of scary because these cars go by us. We have no barriers by, and we're all by the street. And people have threatened to come and run us over. So I think we need something done or, you know, them liable for not protecting us. So who, who can help me with the, the whole safety issue? You're, you're talking about folks accosting you during the day, you're talking about people threatening you at night, you're talking about being very close to fast moving traffic. Um, who, who can help with safety? Public safety, so I'll speak to this. But public safety is here to, to support everyone, including our neighbors experiencing homelessness. So uh, they calling 311, calling 911, um, if it's a non-emergency, if it's an emergency, um, Going to, going to the police station themselves to make reports. Those are important things to do. So just a just, just, just minute. I'm hearing what you're saying, I'm, and I'm telling you those are the resources that we have right now. Okay, okay. I know you've had your hand up for a long time. I have a couple of comments. One is for Britta regarding her comment just now, that those are not any viable ways for people to access those resources and so if people don't have access then those resources just aren't available and the city is the one who has the responsibility of providing access to folks not the other way around the burden should right. be on the person who is suffering who needs help and who does not have the ability to provide that for themselves i would also like to piggyback on what tess said about who um, polices public space so the urban camping ban is an ordinance violation. The orange fencing is also an ordinance right. violation. Right. Are the law, one is being enforced and one is not being enforced. You need a permit in order to do the orange fencing, but you cannot get a permit for someone else's property. However, they did that at the Denver Homeless Out Loud building where Armani from two doors down, who also pulled out a gun in our encampment but was not uh, arrested by the police, um, he put planters outside of our office without a permit, without our permission, called DPD. DPD told him to remove them, and they are still there a week later because who is the enforcement arm? Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, who is conveniently also the one who is displacing people. So one hand is feeding the other. Where is the accountability? So let's go to the public spacing. Who can help me out with the public spacing piece? And after that question, I promise we'll get back to the resource for mental health. I know that was a question that came up from, from this lady a long time ago. So public space, how do we manage public space? That's a question come up several times. 
Anybody want to jump in and help with that one? I, I, I don't see anybody jumping up right away. The, the, the question is, how are, how are we managing the public space? How are we enforcing the public space? If I don't have an answer right now, I can certainly put that on the list and we can get back to it. But I, I'm not one that can answer that question for you. Brittany, you're going to just help us out on all of these. There's a neighborhood services team out of CPD that enforces that type of thing with the permits that you were speaking about or the orange fencing. So, again, it's Wait, 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 I can't, I, I can't have everybody talk at the same time, just, just a second here. Anything else you want to say, or was, was that it? That's the, that's the spot to go, so keep going there. Okay, okay. Let me go to the mental health question that we have. Where do we get resources for that? Where do we get some additional help? Because I know there's several folks who have asked that question. You asked it in the context of the, the guy in the camp. Um, what else? Who can help me out with that? Chris? I, I will say when there's when there's a crisis or an episode that involves mental health, um, I mean, oftentimes I'm communities I'm want to engage in that, that could potentially be unsafe. It could also be um, that those folks are within your network and you're wanting to caretake for them. So thanks for stepping into that space. What the city would would is trying to do is assure that issues of behavior, right? Issues where we're seeing. Uh, behaviors that make people uncomfortable but aren't necessarily an issue of safety or threat to person and property are going to be responded to differently. So the way that we we start structuring that, and, and one thing to remember is this is always a responsive thing. It's it's we have proactive outreach teams like the Denver Street Outreach Collaborative that are out there trying to meet people on the front end. But when there's an episode, we also have a response uh, that we've developed the STAR program with Mental Health Center at Denver. That program is paired to the emergency response call. So if you're calling in a situation where somebody is, um, somebody's having an, an episode or having a crisis within an encampment, you can still call into the city's emergency response system and request that STAR response be embedded within that. So that is not a police forward response. Those are licensed clinical social workers. Those are people who are, are responsive to uh, de-escalation, behavioral health needs, and are responsive to longer term follow up So it's not like they show up, they're like, let's get you out of the crisis, but then we're hands on. They're 100% follow through after the point of crisis to make sure that people aren't left in. They have resources available to them to facilitate that, including the newly opened Solutions Center on the Denver Human Services campus uh, over off of 12th and Federal, which provides three day stabilization beds, but not only three days, you can also move into a program that supports you for about two months to transition out of of homelessness while receiving care for behavioral health. The STAR program is going to expand. There's going to be more vans and more people to facilitate those responses. So we're moving away from the criminal policing response and towards a response of care. Wait, 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 just a just, second, just let, me, let me get over to you. It's okay then that they have a weapon and you don't know what they do or not, or they could just go crazy on it and it's okay for the cops not to do anything, right? Let me, let me get an answer. No, what, I, what I'd say is they're going to assess, like I said, if it's an issue of safety to life or property, it's not going to be handled by the LCSW. If there's a weapon involved and it's an unsafe situation, regardless of whether it involves behavioral health, there's still going to be that police response available to you. Okay, I have five minutes. I want to give a priority to those who are currently experiencing homelessness. And so let me give a priority to that. Comments or questions? All right, one thing is, all right, when you call out for someone that's committed suicide, he's thrown on the ground and beaten up. <laughs> you ask me to help him, I mean, help the mental health. You know, that, you know what I mean? It damages a little more. You know, I got PTSD, so when you put your hands on them, you know, people have been molested and gone through different things in their life that, you know, certain things that make them tick. 
It don't mean they're an animal, it means they need help. It's a sickness. But we keep saying they're criminal, you know? It's not criminal, it's a sickness. So when we treat it as a criminal act, then, yes, you know, it's all looked at as a criminal act. Like pit bulls. I got a sweet pit bull, he was a sweet teddy bear. But people looked at him because he barked as an animal. I mean, all dogs bark. But he, he, the bark made him look best. You know? So that's how we looked at, you know what I mean? Mental health and everything is looked at the wrong way. Like I said, we should have the right doctors there assessing the problem. Like I said before, a uh, person coming to a homeless camp and he have a resident temper and stuff, this should be already displayed. You know, they should have this run down. So he should not be in a place where other people that's, you know, going right. I mean, that now I got this problem. He should be with better health, you know? Like I say, more suicides that happen. And I've seen a lot of friends uh, with suicides and mental health things. It's because they ain't got the help, you know? You know, I only got two minutes, so I'm gonna just run. And it hurts me just to see that we're against each other, you know? We're really against each other. And, you know, this whole weekend, you know, it's still with the fight. And once we get all together and start fixing this problem, that's when we'll stop being on the streets and people will stop being in your backyard. You know, you keep pushing them. You're gonna push them in your backyard. You're gonna push them at your front door. Where are they gonna go? You know? And I think you're, you're the second or third gentleman who has talked about how important it is for us to figure out how to work together on this and not be us and them and come up with some solutions. I also think, Chris, if I understood what you're saying, we're trying to get out on the proactive front end of that. So like you're saying, we're not treating somebody as a, a criminal. We're trying to get them the help before it, it gets to them. I'm sure sometimes it works a lot better than others, but I certainly appreciate your comments. Any any other comments from folks who are currently experiencing homelessness? I've got this lady here and the gentleman over there. Yeah, um, I just wanted to bring up something that I don't think anybody has mentioned yet, which is that so it, it feels a little disingenuous to be throwing out all these resources and pointing out that this is how people access these things without mentioning that the city itself is getting in the way of people accessing these things by constantly sweeping them, right? How is somebody supposed to get to one of these places if they have no assurance that their shit is still going to be there when they get back? How are they supposed to go through the process if they're losing all their documents? How are they supposed to keep up with a caseworker if they're constantly getting moved around? This is not rhetorical either. Like, I have a friend who lost literally everything she owns, and then she tried to kill herself afterward because she lost literally everything she owned on the street. Like, it's it feels insane to be offering people these kinds of mental health resources and then causing mental health problems for them. Um, and so... Uh, my first question is, like, if this is the city's plan is to do this kind of outreach and provide these kind of resources, why is it getting in the way of that by constantly sweeping people? Um, and then secondly, I'd like to address some things to uh, to what Ms. Fisher said, which is that it feels also disingenuous to be talking about, you know, the, the details and requirements of FEMA funding when the city is spending thousands of dollars three days a week sending out dozens of employees from the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, the Department of Public Health and Environment, to put people in in cages and throw away their stuff and push them from block to block. Why can't that funding go to these things that would actually address these problems? Why can't those staff be put to cleaning these restrooms to do this outreach work? Thank you. Appreciate your comments. We, uh, we have a group. Well, I'm walking our group. Why is this woman getting raped in the last stop? We ain't hear nothing about nothing. Several nights. Police ain't doing nothing. We, we police ourselves. We walk around and make our community make sure we're safe. Mm -hmm. people sleep. I, I, I work night and day. I sleep for free in the daytime and I walk the streets at night to protect our community. I don't carry weapons. I just use the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But what, what can we do? We got women out here, our sisters, our mothers, our future mothers, just getting raped. What can we do about it? I, I think the safety issues come up several times. I think that's one we're going to need better answers for, and we're going to need to be revisited. I don't know, did you have your hand up, ma'am, or were you just pointing out that he's here? Okay, um... I think that the person that has the questions maybe has this in the notes, but there was a question that came up repeatedly at the beginning that was regarding, um, regarding uh, the movement. When do we have to stop moving? Um, and I, I haven't heard an answer from the city on that question. The, the whole question of the, the sweeps and the moving and all of that has, has come up several times. I, 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 does any, do I have somebody here that 
can or, or will speak with that. I know we're at 10 o'clock. I know I don't have a lot of time. That's, that, I, I understand. I said, do we have anybody who, who can speak to that or will speak to that? Okay. I, I think that there is definitely an obvious tension here, right? Rita's, Rita and her entire team are trying to do as much work as fast as they can to provide to provide housing for people so that people do not have to live out on the streets. Until we get more solutions, more options that are acceptable to folks, the encampment cleanups are going to continue. Okay. That's that's the best answer that I can get right now because I'm out of time. We'll do this again. We've collected we've collected your questions. We've also taken notes. We'll make these available to uh, Denver Homeless Out Loud. We'll also make this available to the city side so that they have the summary, they have a follow up on that. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to be here. I really appreciate that. Um, and I believe we'll be doing this again in probably another couple of months. And so thank you very much for coming. I appreciate that. Yes. And I'm really grateful for you being here. You leverage everything that you have for our community, and I love you. And I would echo that. I would say thank you all for coming out. I really appreciate that. Both the city and the, the unhoused people. Thank you. Again soon, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Catch the full stream. I got in here late. I got in here late, so um, Brian was here. We'll cut, cut the plastic on YouTube and um, Denver Homeless Out Loud on Facebook. So, love you guys. Mark, can you see me? Oh, it's so dark. Oh, it's too bright there. Anyway, like I said, catch the full meeting at uh, Denver Homeless Out Loud. Okay. DenverHomelessOutloud.org and Denver Homeless Out Loud on Facebook. Um, and um, Cuts of Plastic on YouTube. Thank you guys. I'll see you again soon. I love you.